my friends, welcome to this tutorial about creating games with Solaris. Today we will continue the topic about custom entities. That is, entities, map entities that are fully controlled by your Lua scripts and not by the engine. So, last time we created a fire entity from the lantern item and we made a script so that the fire can hurt enemies. And we'll continue on, on the same idea and this time we want um, our fire entity to be able to uh, turn on um, torches. So we'll create a torch and our torch will also be a custom entity and we will script the collisions so that the torch will be um, lit when the fire is overlapping the torch. So two custom entities interacting with, with each other, the fire and the torch. So here I have a torch.png file, um, which comes from uh, Max. It's a the free torch uh, PNG, and I will create the corresponding sprite sheet. So our sprite will be called entities slash torch. Just don't forget to put the author and the license. Our sprite will so I, I'm the author of the sprite sheet, and he and Max is the author of the PNG file. Anyway, let's create two animations: unlit and lit. So the unlit torch is just this 16 by 16 sprite, and the default origin will be correct. We'll not have to touch this. And the second um, second animation will be lit. So let's create a new multi-frame direction here. Just these three frames. So we have uh, three frames. The origin is still eight by thirteen. And let's put a delay of two hundred and fifty milliseconds between our between our frames, and we can see the preview here if we click play. Okay, so now we have a torch sprite that can be used by any entity and we will create a custom entity with that sprite. Um, we can create the custom entity from the quest editor here. Last time we created it from the lantern item, the lantern, lantern script. Um, by using the code fire equals my map create custom entity. Um, we can create it from the engine, it's exactly the same, except that it will be created as soon as the map is started. So let's put the sprite, um, where is it, entities slash torch. Okay, cool. And ta -da, we have a torch. So that's also a custom entity. How does it behave? Well, we didn't specify anything, so, so it is traversable, which is wrong, of course, and nothing will happen when the fire is overlapping the torch. Okay, so first, let's, well, let's fix these two problems. And first, we will um, make sure that no one can traverse the torch. So let's start with the naive approach. We will give a name to our torch and edit the map script to say torch1 and um, we will use this function here set traversable by. So here we can define very accurately who can traverse our entity, so our torch. And that means any any entity that is moving, that has a movement, um, will be allowed or not to traverse your torch, depending on what you specify here. So the first parameter is a type of entity. You can, for, ex for example, say that uh, enemies can or cannot traverse your torch. And the second uh, parameter is uh, whether you want them to, to be able to, to traverse the torch. 
So here we want all entities to be blocked by the torch. So actually the first parameter is optional. If you skip it, then the traversable parameter will apply to all entities. That's actually what we want set traversable by no one. So always false. Um, so you can do some much finer tuning about that. For instance, the the traversable parameter actually can be either a boolean or the, or even a function. So if it if if it is a function, that means that um, your function will be called when the entity needs to to know when the engine needs to know if an entity can can traverse and. Uh, you can decide really at, at the last moment, depending on who is trying to traverse your your torch. So let's imagine that you have some flying enemies. Maybe these flying enemies will be allowed to traverse your torch, but walking enemies will not. So in this case, you would say set traversable by enemy, and then you pass a function, and that function will uh, will test the exact model of enemy that is trying to traverse your torch and return true or false to, to decide. So that's quite advanced, quite powerful, but we don't need that for this tutorial. We just want no one to be able to traverse the torch. Will it be a problem for the fire? Well, not really. So okay, the hero cannot uh, traverse the torch. Will, it, will this be a problem for the fire? Because technically the fire is also not, not allowed to traverse the torch, but actually the fire is, is not moving. We create it in place, so we create it directly on the torch, which means, so, okay, if, if the fire was moving, then it would be stuck on the torch, because we said, we said that. But here the fire is, does not have any movement, so it actually doesn't matter. Okay, so we did the first improvement. We made sure that the hero cannot traverse the torch and the enemies also cannot traverse the torch. But the second thing is um, that we want, of course, the fire to be able to turn on the torch. But before that, we have, a, I, I mentioned that what we just did is actually quite a naive approach because in the real life you will have probably multiple torches on your map and this one will be one layer downwards below this platform anyway multiple torches and our code right now is in the map script and it only applies to one torch one particular instance the one called torch one so that one the first one we created the other ones are called Torch 2 and Torch 3. So, of course, we don't want to duplicate all the code. And what we can use to fix that is uh, custom entity models. So when you create a custom entity, you can specify a script here. And it's actually exactly the same as enemies. When you create an enemy, you choose the breed here, which is the model of enemy. And it will mean that one enemy script will be executed. So it's the same for custom entities, except that this is optional. By default, no script is no particular script is executed. But you can specify a script. So let's create one. Um, so all enemy models are uh, some Lua scripts in the enemies folder. And similarly, all custom entity uh, models are Lua scripts that are in the entities folder. So let's create a new custom entity model. Let's call it torch. So this is a Lua script and it, again, it works exactly like enemies. Your custom entity will be passed as the first parameter of, of your script. Um, and then you have events like the usual events that are documented, I mean uncreated and, and the rest. So what we put so far in the map code, uh, set traversable by, 
we will remove it from the map code and put it in the custom entity model. So here it's called entity, you can call it however you want, maybe you can call it torch. Set traversable by false. And all our torches should use that model, so let me just remove them all, except the first one. And that also means that they no longer really need a name here. So let's remove the name and let's check custom entity script. Okay, torch. Okay. And now if I have multiple, I'm copy pasting the torch. If I have multiple ones, they all refer to the same custom entity script. So the torch.lua script will be called three times here when this map starts. So our torches should all be uh, blocking the, the hero. Okay, it works. Back to our fire script here in the lantern item. Here we could also have created a model. I mean, when you create a custom entity, either from the code or from the quest editor, you can specify a script here. You can specify the model. So here we didn't. And the reason was why we didn't was because, well, it's, it's quite a unique entity. It's created only here. Unlike torches that, that are meant to be copy pasted on a lot of maps. And um, well, actually, this is not really true because, yes, so far only the lantern script is uh, likely to create fire. But maybe one day we will uh, implement the fire rod that will also create the same kind of fire entity um, with the only difference that it will be. Uh, able to move. So we will do that actually probably in a in a future tutorial and when we do that it will be much better to have a model also for the fire so that um, this code here can be applied from uh, any any fire that is created from either the lantern script or the fire rod script. Because right now we, we didn't use a model, we put all the code only here, specifically to, to this fire here. And it can only be used, it is only used by the lantern, but um, it's, it's not directly um, easy to, to factorize this code for, for the use case, for the future use case of, of the fire rod. So um, yeah, as a summary, we don't have a model yet for the fire, but it will be nice to have one later. <laughs> Not in this tutorial. Okay, so um, now that we have our nice model, we can continue to implement the torch and now make sure that something happen when something happens when the fire touches the torch. So back to the lantern script again. So far. We have a one collision test here that uh, does something when an, an enemy is um, overlapping, I mean the sprite of an enemy is overlapping our fire. So what we can do is also react to the torch. So we can, we are changing the fire script here to react to the torch. We could also do the opposite. And change the torch script, um, update the torch, torch script. Sorry, to react to fire. Um, okay, let's do it here. So, if other get type, so the type of the other entity here that we want to test is not torch because torch is not a type of entity for for the engine. The engine only knows about custom entity type. This is technically a custom entity, but then here comes the model. We can test that the model of our custom entity is indeed torch. Okay, I hope you followed that. It's really like um, here we are testing enemy, and it's it's just like if we wanted to test also an an enemy type, uh, an enemy model. Sorry. <laughs> 
to hurt some different enemies differently. So okay, if this is an enemy, we hurt the enemy. If this is a custom entity that is overlapping our fire, we uh, test the model of custom entity. And if this is a torch, well, this is not over. We, we also need to test that the torch was unlit. So we could check the sprite of the torch from this code, but it's a bit dirty. I mean, it's not really the responsibility of the lantern script to know exactly about torch animations. It would be better to, to have some nice functions. Um, so it would be nice if our torch had a function, for instance, is unlit and another function turn on. So I'm calling these functions, but they don't exist. They don't exist yet. However, it's easy to create them. Back to our torch script. Here we have the torch. And again, this script is called for all torches. Uh, whenever they are created. So we create the function uh, is unlit for all of them. Another function is lit. And another function turn on. So we can use the sprite, the sprite to determine that. So our sprite is entity get sprite. So when I'm writing that, it it means that I'm assuming from this torch script that the torch already has a sprite, which is the case here. I created from the editor some torches with uh, the torch sprite. <coughs> so it will work at least for this for these torches. So okay, return um, sprite get animation. So remember, we created a sprite with two animations, lit and unlit. Is lit will be very similar, and turn on. This time we will just change the animation to lit. Okay, cool. So this should work, I hope. Oh, no, I have some error here. Syntax error, apparently, line 63 of lantern.lua. Else, I forgot the if here, else if. Okay, cool. And it works. Yay, I'm able to um, light my torches. So of course, if I leave the map and I come back, they are recreated, the map is recreated, all entities are recreated, so their state is not saved. We would need some additional code to do that. Also, we would need some additional code to, uh, for instance, open this door when all torches are lit. And I think it will be the topic of our next tutorial. One, just one last small detail. I don't like so much that our torch script here is assuming that the entity already has a sprite. I mean, we could consider that it's responsibility of the torch script to initialize the entity correctly, including creating its sprite. So um, we could. Wh what we can do is that if the sprite if the entity does not have a sprite yet, then we make sure that we, we create a sprite. Create a sprite torch. Which means that I'm no longer I no longer have to set a sprite here in my custom entity from the editor. Just the fact that I'm using the custom entity script torch.lua will be enough because we create the, that very same sprite here.
oops <laughs> create sprites it's entities slash torch because it's uh, in a subfolder of, of sprites called entities okay so it works the same I I prefer to it's a small detail but I, I prefer to do it like this it's, it's more flexible um, I still like to put my sprites also from the editor because um, well just as a map maker I, I can see better what is this uh, custom entity exactly if I put the sprite so um, where is it sprites torch okay So this was really, really a small detail. I, I hope uh, I didn't confuse you too much with that. <laughs> What's important about custom entity models is that they work like entity models, uh, enemy models. Sorry. So you can choose an enemy model when, whenever you create an enemy. Multiple enemies on the same map can have the same model or not, and the model will be called for inch. So the Rua script will be called for each, each instance of your enemy. And same for the custom entities. They really work the same. The, the only difference is that they are optional for custom entities. If you don't set a model here, it will just be a kind of a unique custom entity that you, you can still uh, script from your map, your map script for instance okay i hope this was understandable enough as always feel free to join our discord and to ask questions and we are here to help thank you all for watching and that's all for now bye